Good morning. I'm Michael Doyle. I'm the Executive Director of the Virtual Edge Institute, and I'm joined here this morning with Deborah Sexton, who is the CEO of PCMA, the Professional Convention Management Association, and Susan Katz. And Susan is the Chairman of the Board of PCMA. She's also the Corporate Director of Travel and Events for True Value Corporation. So good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And welcome to all the press here. So again, my name is Michael Doyle. I'm going to jump right into the announcement. So the announcement is that PCMA is making a strategic investment in the Virtual Edge Institute. So again, PCMA is investing in the Virtual Edge Institute in order to help us get our education out there to the broader media, uh, the broader marketplace. So I think it's going to be a great story for many of your readers. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, start off with Deborah Sex, or sorry, Susan Katz. And Susan's going to give a little perspective on the investment. And then we'll talk to Deb Sexton, then we'll come back to me, and then we'll go to Q&A. Thank you, Michael. I want to say we're really thrilled and delighted to uh, be part um, of this strategic alliance with the Virtual Edge Institute. The line between face-to-face uh, -face and virtual is actually blurring in the meetings industry. Virtual has become an extension and an integral part of the strategy for PCMA memberships moving forward. And VEI is the only independent organization really dedicated to education and learning on how to provide the best of virtual events. PCMA is make, making this strategic investment in VEI today in order to help our members get the be best education possible on how to integrate this technology into their meetings and to become more successful and useful to their organizations. We're very excited about this moving forward. Deborah? Um, several years ago, we, had, uh, we were introduced to Michael first and foremost, and then the Virtual Edge Institute. And, and PCMA was, at that point in time, uh, investigating what is this virtual all about? What, how, do we, how do we become, uh, how do we get a better understanding of how virtual is going to affect face-to-face -face meetings, et cetera? Uh, we invited Michael and the Virtual Edge Institute to co-locate with our meeting la this, this year, actually, um, in uh, Las Vegas, convening leaders. And uh, we had a very, very interesting uh, uh, event with the two, two organizations. And we'll be co-locating again in San Diego in January. The reason we're doing this is because Virt uh, Virtual Edge Institute is the organization that has, we believe, the very best education currently on how to. How to embrace a virtual hybrid meeting and, uh, uh, within your face-to-face -face activities. And, and how does this enhance face-to-face -face meetings, your, your meetings, which is what we're most in, uh, uh, interested in with PCMA. Uh, PCMA is also known for um, the highest level education. And we sat back and said, what do we need to do and who should we align with that currently can provide that education, not only to PCMA and its members, but to the industry at large. And so our opportunity was to sit down with Michael, to talk with Michael about what are your plans with the Virtual Edge Institute. And we quickly realized that if we help them um, in a small way, financially, uh, they would be able to provide more education, faster, better, if you will, uh, for an industry that's very, very interested today in how virtual and hybrid and digital uh, events can enhance what they do on a face-to-face -face basis. So logically, we sat down and we came to the conclusion that uh, a strategic investment with, uh, with the Virtual Edge Institute would enable this to happen in the next 12 months, which we think is a critical time uh, for the advancement of uh, virtual and hybrid meetings uh, for the industry. Well, so I think we're going to get some great stories again for you, and I know we have some uh, opportunities with some calls after this uh, press conference with uh, many of the press out there, and uh, also if you'd like to schedule something, um, we're available for that as well. But uh, I wanted to say that I think this is really important for the industry, and it's important for the industry because you know, we've gone past this point of uh, us, uh, you know, us being the face-to-face -face industry and them, the virtual industry, you know, coming together now to really be one industry, it's us, and um, now being able to take all of the advantages of the digital extensions, the virtual extensions, you know, before events, during events, after events, ex expanding the audience that you can reach with your face-to-face -face events now, and also being able to do that over a longer period of time 
so that 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 content that meeting has a longer um, lifespan uh, you know I think taking all those things together and going forward uh, you know this makes a much much stronger proposition a much stronger ROI for the, uh, the for the face-to-face -face events industry and uh, you know I'm really excited about that it's a, it's a real turning point in the industry today this would be our second uh, uh, complete hybrid meeting and across the board we've been able to monitor that indeed we have increased our attendance. I did hear from many, many people that had took advantage of watching our hybrid uh, event and I got lots of emails that said it was fantastic and more of my staff was able to experience the kind of education that's available at convening leaders or at our education conference but it also uh, reminded me that it isn't just that, it's also the peer to peer and networking opportunities that I missed. So I'm definitely coming next year, but if you'll continue this, our team will get a broader exposure to PCMA and its education. And I think that that's what we're seeing. So we're seeing increased face-to-face -face attendance, but we're also seeing a much broader uh, exposure for PCMA and the industry at large um, regarding the kinds of education that exist today and are being uh, monitored and, and uh, are, are being incorporated in hybrid and virtual uh, platforms. So it is very, very exciting. And I think from a planner perspective, we really need to stay on top of our game in order to continually uh, bring new information and uh, new opportunities uh, to our executives uh, and to our organizations so that we are providing the information. We're the source of information on how we can increase our ROI in our meetings and events and continue to stay relevant uh, and continue to talk to our CEOs on a level that they can understand on how to continually grow the income from our events. And I think virtual is certainly one of the ways that we're going to be able to do that, knowing what's available, how to use it, and being able to explain that in an easy way is something I think is going to be critically important for all of us in the industry. You know, Susan, I think that's such, a, such an important point, and that is that one of the tools that we need to create for our membership and for those within the industry is how do you go to the CEO of your organization and sell this concept? Uh, what are those uh, bullet points, if you will, that, that will help the organization understand the benefit of, uh, of a virtual platform and a hybrid meeting uh, digital event, if you will. And, and that's a missing component. And if we can create some of that dialogue uh, so that our members minimally and the industry can, can, can advance this with the higher level, the C-suite, um, we'll, we're going to see adoption that's uh, pretty phenomenal pretty quickly. Um, and, and while I mention that, um, I, I think it's important that I mention and recognize the board of directors of PCMA. Uh, many, many organizations direct boards would not have po potentially embraced something like this that could in the minds of some people affect face-to-face -face activities. We don't believe that. We really do think that uh, hybrid meetings, virtual platforms, digital events, etc., can enhance face-to-face. -face. But the point that I'm making is our board of directors said we're all about the best education, we're all about advancing our industry, and if this effort is going to help us do that, we are 100 percent behind it. And I've got to tell you that working for a board that is that um, supportive, um, innovative, and willing to take some risks is very exciting and it makes my job really, really very special. But more importantly, I don't know a lot of boards that would have done that as quickly as this board has done it. So Susan, as the chair, you need to be recognized, as does the entire board on that. And we're very excited about it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't have said it better, Deborah. And, um, you know, on that note, though, I'd like to say that, you know, we are looking to really reach out and collaborate with all of the different organizations out there. <clears throat> you know, MPI, IAEE, ASAE, you know, we're looking to really build a coalition out there that we can really take this to the next level. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. And I think the one thing you mentioned, research. That's something we absolutely need to do more of. And I think that we can best do it by, you know, everyone coming together and participating in that research. And, you know, not just the other organizations, but a lot of the vendors out there as well, a lot of the agencies that uh, have a great, uh, you know, presence in this industry. I think we can all come together and do some, some really great research there and, and bring that into the C-suite and show more value, more ROI in this. This is an industry issue. This is not a PCMA issue. It's an industry-wide issue. And the, the, the more education, the more how-tos uh, to be successful in this area, the better off the industry is going to be. So I couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, hopefully your education will be seen at many of the industry organization events coming up in the future. Clearly it's going to be at PCMA. We already know that. But, uh, but I see it at, 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 at lots and lots of other industry um, industry events and again our contribution as a strategic uh, investment is uh, uh, first and foremost on behalf of the industry secondarily on behalf of PCMA's members clearly so um, we have the opportunity here for you to participate um, there's a Q&A tab um, <clears throat> on your virtual environment where you can just click on that and ask some questions and we do have a few questions here one is for Deborah, and uh, it is, uh, what is the uh, relationship between uh, PCMA and VEI going forward? Um, it, it's, uh, I, I see the relationship very similar to our relationship with other industry organizations. VEI is an organization that produces research and education on behalf of digital, virtual, and hybrid events. Um, and that, to us, is, is very important that we have a close relationship uh, so that as they produce new education, we can offer that education to our members and we can support that education in the industry. But it's a, um, uh, a relationship that we share with many, many industry organizations. Great. And there's uh, one for me, which is, uh, what will you do with the funding from uh, PCMA? And uh, I would say it, it really is going to not really change what we're doing that much, except accelerate that. And a perfect example is the digital event strategist program that we have, the certification program that we're rolling out. And now, uh, with the help of PCMA and uh, hopefully other organizations as well, we can bring that out more quickly and uh, to a much broader audience and uh, and be much more impactful quicker um, with uh, with this additional funding in addition to that we're also um, looking at as I mentioned uh, establishing some serious research around this area and and kind of making VEI a, a center of excellence uh, in this space and uh, so that's uh, that's those are some of the things that we're going to be doing with the funding um, you know it, it's a matter of just um, bringing in some more resources to uh, to the virtual Institute. And you know, um, we often talk about the downturn in the economy, and, and there's still questions about where is the economy, what's going to happen in the next 12 to 24 months. I think one of the things that always comes out of a downturn is we have to think about how we do business differently. And I think by adding a virtual component to what we're doing today um, as meeting professionals, is a critical area that we really need to understand. And I think you're going to see change in how we do business. And I think this is one of the areas that is going to advance faster than we ever thought. Uh, and a lot of that might be tied to the economy. So, um, so, so again, I think the timing couldn't be better. Yeah. So we have another question here, which is, um, uh, does this mean PCMA is acquiring BEI? And I think we've answered that already, actually. But uh, no, it does not mean that. Um, it is an investment in what we're doing and uh, an investment really to help us get that education and, and uh, learning uh, distributed much more rapidly. So, so the answer is no. And again, we're, we, you know, we will be looking at other organizations and have started to dialogues with other organizations uh, to do a similar type of thing. And from the PCMA board perspective, we really feel that um, getting the information out as quickly as possible, getting the education modules built was critically important to our membership so that they could uh, get on board, learn what's going on, um, really get involved with virtual in order to help their own organizations. And the faster, the better. This is technology that's evolving so quickly. And we didn't um, feel that we could wait to get that unbiased opinion that VEI is going to provide us and the educational opportunities for our membership. So we're very, very excited about it. 
I think when you when you think about um, PCMA's Education uh, Foundation, uh, which produces education research for the industry and has for a number uh, for many many years, actually ever since its inception. So I think you want to think about this in many degrees the same way, in that it's a it's an investment in education. And that's what the foundation has done. And prior to the foundation, that's what PCMA did. And PCMA does this on, on certain projects uh, constantly year-round anyway. Uh, so th that's really the way you want to look at it, that uh, PCMA, again, is, is investing in education. And I think uh, you know another question related to the summit and uh, ownership and whatnot, um, the Virtual Edge Institute will, um, will be producing the Virtual Edge Summit. We'll be co-locating it again this year, um, or next year, I should say, in 2012, um, at the PCMA Convening Leaders event, January in San Diego. Uh, it'll be more tightly integrated this year than it was last year, so it'll be running concurrently um, to the PCMA programming, so we're excited about that. We've got some um, very exciting things that we're doing in the Learning Lounge uh, with some of the demos that we're doing and, and uh, technology that we're bringing in. So, but but it will be a separate program. We expect many of the PCMA uh, attendees will be attending uh, the Virtual Edge Institute sessions as well. So we're excited about that. But uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's a separate event, uh, but uh, very tightly um, co-located uh, and intertwined with the, uh, with the PCMA Convening Leaders event. OK, we've got some more questions that just came in. So OK. Um, Keep flashing by here. Yes, we are co-locating with convening leaders. Is this a, oh, this is a good question here. Is this a one-time investment? Now, or Michael, they're all good questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one in particular. Okay. Is this a one-time investment, or will PCMA be continually investing? I, I, it's a good I think idea. It's, I, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Michael, and uh, thank you whoever posed that question. But. Uh, I think it's a wait and see. Let's see what this investment means uh, to the industry, to uh, Virtual Edge Institute. And uh, clearly, uh, the board has been uh, supportive. And if, if uh, the results are, are uh, as positive as we believe they're going to be, uh, I don't know that it needs to be a one-time investment. But I certainly can't answer uh, on behalf of the board of directors at this point uh, or not. Uh, but again, as I say, if this is as, uh, as exciting as we think it is, um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an ongoing support on behalf of uh, PCMA for the Institute. But Susan, y you and I, I don't know that we have the authority to pledge additional funds. At this point, it's a, a wait and see. We'll see how it goes. We know we um, have made the right decision at this point. I'm sure future boards will also look at it and see if they see value continue the relationship. Great. And so uh, here's a, a question from Michelle Bruno. Um, with the PCMA support, how will VEI use the very technology that is attempting to promote and support? And, uh, you know, another great question. And uh, Michelle, what, what we're planning on doing is um, we'll be using the PCMA 365 event. We'll actually have the Virtual Edge Summit within the PCMA 365 event. It'll be separate, but, it, but within that virtual environment. So people will be able to go into PCMA 365 and go into Virtual Edge Summit sessions and, uh, and, and experience our event there. Uh, or they'll be able to come in through the Virtual Edge Summit and uh, be able to experience our event and then go into PCMA. Um, so it's kind of like uh, you know an East Hall and West Hall, if you will. Um, in, no matter where you come in, you'll be able to get access to, to either of those two areas. Um, we're also going to have a presence on our website um, going forward that uh, will allow our members to connect to the Virtual Edge uh, Institute website as well if that's where the education resides that they're particularly interested in. So we will connect that way, but that can be, uh, but I think that's going to be the same with all industry organizations, frankly. Um, so, but, but that is one area that will allow us to be uh, connected, if you will, to Virtual Edge Institute. And uh, Andrea Doyle asks, uh, what is the exact monetary value of the investment? Well, uh, we're really looking at that, Andrea, uh, and I would prefer not to get into dollars. Uh, I don't think that that's what's important. I think what's important today is that we believe so strongly 
in the Virtual Edge Institute and the ability for the Institute to deliver the very best education, that we are making an investment and we will monitor that investment uh, for the next 12 uh, to 18 months. Um, and hopefully, um, uh, at the end of that time, uh, we, we, we may share that amount with, with all of you. Uh, and, and I think we're going to be very proud of the fact that uh, what we consider is a, 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 a substantial but not, uh, not too substantial investment is going to be really something very special for the industry. I would say that it's priceless. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another one um, from Rob, Rob Spaulding. And Rob asks, uh, many associations are frightened not of the technology but of the cost. Can you say anything about that? Go ahead. Yeah, I can. Um, I can tell you that two years ago when we first started getting involved, um, I said to a group, uh, we don't have very much money. And uh, they came back to me at the end of probably nine months of meetings and negotiations, etc. And they came to me with a, a, what I considered was a substantial amount of money, and I think, it was a, uh, I think it was somewhere in excess of a quarter of a million dollars, which is something that PCMA was not, uh, at that point in time, willing to invest. I can tell you now that entry into this uh, area has, has uh, changed dramatically. Um, I believe that for as little as and, I, and I, I'm probably not the right one, but, but for as little as $25,000, you can begin to get involved in this, um, in this industry, and you can build upon that. And I think that's what you need to do. You don't, I don't know too many organizations that can come in with all the bells and whistles right the first time they've ever uh, uh, entertained the thought of doing a hybrid meeting. This is not live streaming. This is, this is much more complex. It requires production, etc. But it's worth every minute of it. But you want to start small, in my opinion, and you want to build on that. And that's pretty much what PCMA did. And, I, but it is affordable, is I think uh, the, the message that needs to get out there. I, I think there's also a great opportunity to learn. Obviously, we all need to learn what does it take, what's, what is not only the cost to enter into the virtual environment, but what's the return on that investment. And we need to continue to, to get the figure, facts and figures that we can take and uh, really educate ourselves so that we can educate our organizations. And that's where VEI comes to the table, to give us that basis of information so that we can speak intelligently about that as we move forward. Why would someone want to get into virtual? What does it provide? What's the cost of entry? What are the different options, whether it be a 365 event or whether it be tied to a live event, face-to-face -face event? And how do you monetize that event? And what are the opportunities to monetize it and bring back um, additional revenue to your organizations uh, rather than seeing it as a, as a just a cost, standalone cost event? I think part of what uh, VEI has been so good at as far as education is concerned is education on how do you monetize this. And, and listening to people that have been involved and that have tried many different approaches. Um, and there are many approaches, but it is not as difficult as people think um, as it relates to monetizing uh, a program of this nature. So I, uh, that's another uh, reason we're so excited that uh, the uh, Virtual Edge Summit is going to co-locate with us because that's a program that I think many of our members are going to be very interested in participating in. Absolutely, and, and we have a couple you know, questions related to that, which is um, uh, one from Michael Shapiro, which is, are future co-locations planned with any other associations? And uh, at this particular time, we don't have uh, any other co-locations planned with other associations, but the plan is um, to go out there to uh, all of the other associations, and we have started talking to some of them, and uh, putting together a similar type of program uh, as, as we're doing with PCMA to, to reach their audience and, and uh, uh, you know, help, uh, help really educate the, the broader marketplace out there, and PCMA is in full support of us doing that. So, uh, you know, we see that Absolutely. as the future, really. Absolutely. Our investment here is an investment um, for the industry, not just PCMA alone. We know that there are people out there who are going to be interested in the education that Michael's going to be able to develop, and that we're very happy um, to provide that you're going to be able to provide that to the entire industry and help grow this this component um, in addition to face-to-face -face, obviously teaching people how to integrate the virtual 
And I think we've also thought about that in that if, if for example, next year or the year after, uh, another industry organization wants the Virtual Edge Summit to be co-located with their activities, um, our thought is that we would continue to have branded Virtual Edge Institute education within our program that the Institute will produce um, but that maybe in two years or a year or whatever, um, that summit will rotate around to ASAE, MPI, all of, the, all of the industry organizations, and that's fine. But we're hoping that we'll always have, uh, going forward, branded education that is, as I say, created and executed and presented by the Institute within our program. And that may be five five uh, concurrent sessions, something along that line. Uh, but they'll be there yeah. to help our members. Great. Getting lots of questions now, so this is great. Uh, Christy Saunders asks, uh, where do VEI's instructors come from, and are they primarily people working in the field? Uh, are they technical operators, or are they planners? And uh, that's a great question. Um, and it's a combination of uh, all of the above. So uh, our instructors are basically folks that we have identified um, over the course of the years as people who are actually, you know, out there using this technology. Um, you know, it, it's uh, they're out there on the uh, on the virtual edge, um, trying new things. And that's something that I would recommend that everybody does. You know, there are best practices out there, but there's new best practices being invented every day. And and certainly this is an area that's so new that um, that that's going to be the norm and I'm really excited about you know having the the event planners come into this space and really embrace this technology and take it to the next level. I've, I've said for a long time now, the innovation in this area is not going to come from the technology it, that will continue to evolve, but I think the, the non-linear growth of this um, is going to come from the event producers who have this knowledge of how to engage with people um, face to face. Now they're going to have this new tool and uh, I'm really excited about that aspect of it is, you know, having these people that, that have this experience get their hands on this technology. And technology that's, that's much, much easier to use today than it was back when we started this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of self-service environments out there, a lot of easy to use tools out there. Um, so I, I'm really excited about what's, what's coming. So to answer the question, we've got a combination of people who have been in the event producer, producer uh, role, uh, the meeting producer role, um, but we also have people who come from more of a digital background uh, and they're learning more about events but they have more of the, the technology background. So it's a combination of both and it really depends on the um, on the particular topic that we're addressing at that point in time. Uh, if it's about marketing, uh, you know, your event and, and audience acquisition and those kinds of things, we tend to rely on people who have marketing experience and specifically event marketing experience, but also online event marketing experience to help uh, people understand, you know, what are the best methods to do that today. Um, but uh, but it, it really is a mix of people, and uh, we go out of our way to really vet the uh, the instructors that we have. A lot of them have been speakers at uh, prior events that we've done. Um, a lot of them have been speakers at online events. Uh, a lot of them are just people that we, we talk to on a regular basis uh, from an editorial standpoint, um, but they're people who are willing and excited to share their knowledge and and you know that's that's the heart of it. I think it's interesting that you're mentioning uh, the technology too because I think what I've seen in the last 18 months is that uh, the technology companies that have created these platforms, that c have created uh, the technology that's being used today, are more interested in talking to the event industry to try to figure out how do we, ha where, where, where are we really going with this? Because they may have had a, a thought in mind when they first created the uh, virtual platforms, for example. Um, and I think maybe some of that might have been that uh, virtual uh, meetings would do away with face-to-face, -face, but we all know that that's not the case anymore. So now it's how do we enhance the face-to-face? -face? How do we work together to continue to improve the products and the technology that exists today? And I love the fact that we're collaborating together to make this a much better product going forward and more affordable. Frankly, they heard that the cost of entry was prohibitive. And those companies, many of them, went back and said, all right, if we want to be in this industry, we need to change that. And they have changed that. And I think that that's, um, 
That's really very exciting that you're going to see that kind of collaboration, which is important. So one of the things I wanted to uh, mention before we run out of time here, um, we do have a tab that uh, is on your environment that says um, handouts. So we've got the press release there. Um, we've got uh, various different documents that we've put in there that we think you might find uh, useful. And, um, uh, and you can just download those uh, at any point in time. Um, again, if you're interested in uh, speaking some more with Susan or Deborah or myself, um, we'll be available to talk to folks. And we did not get a chance to, uh, to answer all of the questions that you have here, uh, but we will go back and uh, we will answer those questions online so you'll be able to come into this environment again and, uh, and have all of, the, uh, all of your questions answered. So uh, with that, I want to say, Thank you so much um, for everything, um, and uh, look forward to uh, you know just taking this to the next level. And uh, you know I think this is an exciting time for the industry. Thank you, Michael. We're excited about working with you and your team. Um, I think it's going to be a great, uh, great number of years uh, advancing this industry. So thank you very much. And we really look forward to the outcome of all of your work and um, learning from you. So we look really excited about that. Great. And thank you for all of you that have joined us today. Absolutely. Thank you very much and for everybody who helped us produce this.